Engage. <laughs> Here we are talking about an exciting episode of Trek It or Wreck It because there's no new Orville. Mm -hmm. That means this episode of Discovery just has to pass the bar of <laughs> reruns. If this is more watchable than reruns of the Orville, it gets to win. <laughs> so, challenge accepted. <laughs> Let's talk about Lede. Lete? Hard to say. It's Latin. Don't beat yourself up. I'm not beating myself no. up either. It's yeah. one of the five rivers of Hades, we just realized. <laughs> it means oblivion. So, or forgetfulness. Uh, you may remember it from a Harry Potter curse. Obliviate. <laughs> That's sort of how a lot of people remember stuff these days when they're Latin. <laughs> I'm Matt. I'm a huge Trekkie. This is Vanya. She is a big time Trekkie. <laughs> this is Heath. Heath is a huge Trekkie and also Kat's husband. <laughs> so, there might be an episode coming up soon where we find out what both of them think about an, about an episode or two. Matt, so that's well, gonna Matt be will be time. our marriage counselor and right? we'll be fighting back and forth. We'll, we'll uh, discuss, oh, what do you uh, think? I don't know. Now, how does that make you feel, Heath? <laughs> <laughs> so now let's get down to this and talk about some interesting characters we got to co see come back in this episode. We saw this sort of, I'm going to say, questionable character, Nash. This character that just showed up and got rescued suspiciously from a Klingon place yeah. that happened to also have Vox girlfriend who was running it. And so who's this Nash guy? This is an interesting an interesting element. Yeah. What do you guys make of Nash? Vanya? I'm feeling pretty good about him now after this episode, but I'm all, I feel like I have to remain cautious about him. Like even though I'm like, yeah, he seems like a cool guy and everybody's getting along. I mean, that can all change, maybe, Absolutely. you know. Absolutely. Um, but and he seems to be making a very like excellent recovery. Which also is suspicious, maybe? Um, yeah, but so far I like him right now. He's easy on the eyes. That helps. He's got that guy. <laughs> what about you, Heath? What you well, he is easy on the eyes. <laughs> um, I just get, I get a huge red herring feel from him. Mm. And it, maybe it's just... Just the way that it's set up, it's mm -hmm. like you said, everything's just a little bit too easy mm -hmm. that... It's either going to be, uh, he'll turn out, something will switch in him and it'll go bad, but then he'll be good and he'll save everyone, or he'll just be flat out bad or something. And then I'm also kind of thinking like back to the original Trek with the Klingons that look like humans, but were just a little bit different. So yeah. part of me is wondering if he's something like that a little bit. I gotta be honest, after last week, I thought, oh, they gave Vok the... Um, the augment virus from Enterprise, mm -hmm. and it made Vok look like a human. Great. So this is Vok, because his girlfriend is running the station, so this guy's obviously Vok. Because when his girlfriend said, are you willing to sacrifice everything to a bunch of people who are racial purists, that would mean no longer being your race. So if he were to become a human, that would pretty much do the job. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, this guy's obviously Vok. But if they are also um, saying that he has a service record, because him showing up and looking human is one thing. Him walking in front of a triple, which was suspiciously not at Lorca's desk this time around, <laughs> right. mm -hmm. that would tell us something about him, because even right. the augment versions of them trigger the triples. So the question then becomes... Are, have Klingons been redesigned to obscure the actors so much so that they can do this little trick where a guy who plays this character is actually this character because the guy who plays Vok, if you look him up on IMDb, that ain't a real person. That is a completely made up, not real dude. The only picture of him ever is as Vok, and the only thing he's ever done <laughs> is that show. Oh. So Vok's not a real actor. The guy in there, they're lying about something. Right. So it will be very interesting to find out what they're trying to pull here. Yeah, are they trying to reveal something? Are they have they just enraged the whole entire fandom? For I mean, one they, crummy move. Yeah, I hope a it's better than that. Move. I really hope it's better than that. I'm hoping that as well. <laughs> I absolutely am. Uh, computer. Uh, Sonia is a little bit suspicious about all of the suspicion around Nash. <laughs> wants to know if you have any insider info. 
Insider info. The only insider info that I've been able to pick up at all is strictly off of the professional version of the IMDb page that I happen to have access to, mm -hmm. which isn't really all that inside. For like 160 bucks, you could have it too. Um, <laughs> but it's essentially giving you all the information you need to know that the guy under that makeup right. is being hidden. It's being very carefully guarded that information just like which episode is Jonathan Frakes going to be directing right. that information isn't available in fact th the weekend that this episode aired they updated the IMDB to tell you who the director was it wasn't until Saturday that you yeah. knew what, who was directing Sunday my guess is because Jonathan Frakes let slip that bit about the mirror universe if we knew in advance which episode Frakes did We'd we would be able where to surmise where the mirror universe one is. I, uh, my, the only reason I feel suspicious about him is just, it, that's my geek gut. I watch so much television movies that I'm like, oh, I'm like prepared for it to be like, for him to switch or something to happen yeah. just in case, you know, I'm like, I don't know in case for what, but anyway, <laughs> I just, I'm like, you gotta guard just, yourself up. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't want to get too attached. I mean. It's funny because he's pro he has happened to like make you attached really quickly, unlike the other Discovery characters. Like you, I haven't really been attached to him. He's like it's like Tilly. I'm kind of attached to Burnham, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like, but this happened really quickly, and yeah. then I'm like, no, no, don't let your guard down. Cause yeah, it, the it, only <laughs> charismatic person on the whole show could be an evil Klingon in disguise. <laughs> but it, I think we're right to be suspicious because you've seen so much television where they do introduce that character yeah. and he does turn out to be exactly what you thought he was. I think the best thing they could do is just, nope, that's not it. Yeah, he's or that, they could be like a reverse, dude. like a, he he's, looks like he's bad and then they go back to him, like you said, yeah. and then he's actually really good all the way through, right? Yeah, yeah. But they, it, they get this suspicious like we're suspicious. Like Which would be good because right now nobody's suspicious of that. <laughs> Which no, is really weird. No. Lorca's just picking up strays. It's like, this one is a mutineer. That one, I don't know. I just found him in a prison. And it's just like I all these characters that uh, are getting being given high rank. Like, it sounds like yeah. Burnham is being given a station on the bridge now. Yeah. Because the other stray just became the chief of security. Like, chief didn't security. Landry, yeah, uh, didn't Landry have, like, I have 10 years of Starfleet command right? experience. Like, I got this on my resume and this. Yeah, but I just met this person. And I really like cool. him. Yeah. And d didn't Landry have like a second in command that maybe would be a gunnin for that job? <laughs> yeah. And now this total stranger shows up. Um, computers? <laughs> Uh, Derek is joining. Hey, Derek. Derek. Hey. And suggests that maybe Lieutenant Tyler could be like Michael Eddington from Deep Space Nine. No. Yeah. Why, why would you hurt me like that? Please. <laughs> Derek, you're probably right. But but that would make me really sad. It would. Because that would. was always really heartbreaking. But like, you know what? If if this show <laughs> managed to pull on some actual heartstrings and make us feel something, that would be great. Because I think we need to talk about all the false stakes that this episode was hanging off of. Sarek. We have seen Sarek perfectly alive, perfectly well in the original series, in the next generation, in movies. We ha yeah. Sarek makes it out of this scrape okay. <laughs> so for your hook at the beginning to be, oh no, is he going to be okay? Of course he's going to be okay. So then it becomes, how is he okay? Mm. And I just thought, uh, you're hanging the stakes on that? I think the stakes... We're looking at the stakes through Michael Burnham, right? So the stakes Fair. are for her. Like, that's her... It's, like, her, her soul. Like, those are the stakes yeah. there. So I think... I, I don't mind that so much, you know? Yeah. What about you? What do you think about this well, Sarek I, I could definitely, being the mulligan? Going, going to that, I could definitely, like... Michael's Vulcan was coming out a little bit more yeah. in this episode, more so than than other ones. So to go into the Vulcan heritage a little bit, I, that I can kind of see, mm -hmm. okay, didn't get into the Vulcan Science Academy, so I'm going to send you to Starfleet. Mm -hmm. To get that backstory, great, but it almost seemed like it kind of wasn't needed. And then also mm -hmm. with Sarek, it's like, okay, same thing. Like, you know he's going to be fine. They're, they're going to get to him and yeah. mm -hmm. all that. and the whole mind meld through machine mm. sets up a dangerous thing because it's never been seen anywhere else. It's a bit mystical. That's the thing yeah. about a mind meld. It's, it reminded me as I saw a machine going on her face, mm -hmm. doing all yep. the things you would expect a mind meld to do. It made me think of that stupid little device that uh, that Qui-Gon Jinn has in <laughs> Star Wars The Phantom Menace where he's measuring midichlorians. Mm. You're like, wait, 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 wait. 
the force, this mystical, awesome thing you're about to quantify with a little doohickey and a dumb word like midichlorian. <laughs> and, and it just, I felt my inner geek just get angry as I saw that thing go on her face. But then, ultimately, I liked the way it worked out, so my geek is conflicted. What did you think? I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay with it because it's really, it's just a booster of their real, like, <laughs> the, the connection is there and it's just giving them a little boost. Signal I mean, boost, we have you. a bunch of things that boost things that are natural and mystical or whatever. Like, you can, I can totally see through that. I'm good. I would have been happier if she, like, had to eat a Vulcan root <laughs> or, like, drink a Vulcan tonic and then she was able to communicate better because, as it is, she has this Katra connection that... You know, and we have kind of seen in the past when when Picard, Ta- Picard yeah. yeah, and when to Paul, yeah, and yeah. and um and trip trip had that like I'm in your dream connection. Mm-hmm. We've seen stuff like this happen before where people can communicate at speeds faster than light. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's like a weird mystical undercurrent that Star Trek has, but pretends maybe yeah. is science in some way. And this just scienced it up in a way that I wasn't ready for, but I I could be more ready for computer. Uh, well, Kat is joining us. Oh, and Kat! She, uh, she says, can we please talk about the mind meld within the mind meld? And she proposes a way of uh, deciding whether we think it's a Vulcan or a Vulcan. <laughs> 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 yeah, the mind meld inside of a mind meld. That, I don't know, that, that entire dream sequence at the science center mm. graduation mm. negotiation, whatever that was, mm. um, I, th- I think that's a thing worth talking about in general. Inception. Because, yeah, and Chris Nolan sure doesn't care about science. No. And, th- and in <laughs> Inception, it's no, it's, it's he's not hiding that at all because this device that has like an accordion right. manages to get into people's <laughs> dreams. So yeah, it was a little bit Inception dream within a dream, mind well, melting a the mind point melt. when she's discovered that she's not supposed to be there, the dream attacks. Yeah. And kicks her out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is quite yeah. interesting. Although attacked using some of the lamest, lamest. looking That's kung fu, guess. but really it's Tal Shia <laughs> is the name of like the Vulcan martial art. And I feel like um, you didn't mind the fight scene that much. I feel like we're not really looking at something that's real. So to me, it's not real. It's all a dream. Everything's like a metaphor in there. Like it's not, nothing's real. I don't need it to be, I don't need them to make it like super, super real because it's not. Interesting. You know? Interesting. It's just in somebody's mind and who's uh, somebody that's weakened. I'm a kick-ass like their... fighter in my mind. I'm, just gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I'm awesome. awesome. Who's weakened, you know, it, we can see it in many different ways. It could have been done in a different way. They chose fighting. You know what I mean? But it can be manipulated in any way because it's not real. Interesting. So it was a metaphorical fight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not an that. actual fight. It's a. I would have liked like, to have seen it feel a little more surreal if it's a if it's if it is a indeed point. a dream. I do agree with that. I, that is a good point. In fact, the bridge of the Shenju looked more like mystical and surreal with all those awful lens flares everywhere <laughs> than this dream in Sarek's mind did to me. It was just very plainly shot. Very, very clean. Maybe that's why Vulcan dreams are. Maybe. <laughs> really, Vulcan dreams are just so boring. <laughs> that was an erotic dream too. Right. That's 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 hot for Vulcans. Yeah. Um, so this this idea of oh man, he chose Spock for the science academy over over Michael, and then Spock chooses, and we know in the yeah. future he chooses uh, Starfleet instead. How do we feel about that? Like, is this a reveal that made you feel something you felt like you yeah. needed to feel? I, I predicted it. I, I was like, oh, no. Because when they were having the conversation, I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be a choice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as it re- like before it happened, he, it was revealed. I knew because Mikey got told yeah. me. <laughs> and then I, but I was like, yeah, that sucks. Because that's some, totally something that would happen. Yeah. Yeah. It was believable to me in the Star Trek world. Like, it, I believed it. Yeah. And I was, it was kind of. Crappy for him. I bought it. I don't know that I cared, but I bought it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. I, like I bought it. So I, I don't know if I cared. Yeah, I really love Sarek. The thing is, Mark Leonard made Sarek an incredible character. Yeah. And this recast of him, obviously, he's dead. Uh, although we've seen that hmm, work okay for Grand Moff Tarkin, but eh, a little bit out of the budget of yeah. a of a weekly show. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like 
this new guy's doing a good job. I think the woman they had play Amanda, Mia yeah. Kirshner. Yeah. Holy crap. She looks so much. I never noticed how much she looks like Amanda in the original yeah, series. Yeah, That was great. Way more than Winona Ryder, because Winona Ryder looks a whole lot like Winona frigging Ryder. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a little hard to be like, oh, look, Spock's like, mom. It's like, no. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just do, we'll just do Are we on. watching we, Heather? We, we were yeah. watching and Kat was like, Mia Kirshner was in this episode? I'm like, yeah, she was, she was his wife. And she's like, what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I really liked Mia Kirshner in this. What did what did I, you think between her and Winona? Who would you? Uh, I like Mia Kirshner more, um, but I mean, the JJ universe is not really real. No, nah, <laughs> it, takes, it takes place in a, in, in a Grayson, timeline we uh, all pretend. Like, I don't know what happened. To my, my Anna Grayson had like plastic surgery and ended up like a yeah. Winona Ryder um, in that <laughs> universe. But I really thought she was really good. I mean, and I I I believed her too. Like I felt her compassion. I felt that she actually cared about. Michael Burnham, like like her daughter, uh, you know what I mean. I felt like they had a connection as much as a Vulcan can, can have, like with his spouse. Yeah, um, yeah. Although, and you know what I really missed? Job. I mi- there's this thing that uh, that Amanda and Sarek do where they like hold each other's right. little little fingers. Oh, yeah, so nice. not, yeah. <laughs> it bothered me that that never happened in this, and yeah. maybe it's just like the continuity porn would have been really nice. Just that little bit <laughs> would have been good. That would have been uh, computer. Such. Uh, two shout outs. One for the name Vulcan Dreams as a possible primetime soap opera spin off. Yes. And then one from Jeff for Mia Kirshner representing The Six. That's uh, true. <laughs> yeah. Not only is Amanda human, she's also Canadian. <laughs> yes. From Toronto. Right. I will take it. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about there's been some people complaining about this one establishing shot of Vulcan where there appears to be a moon in mm. the background because Spock famously says Vulcan has no moon. Right. However, Vulcan does have a sister planet. Right. And maybe it's the sister planet from which Spock in the accursed JJ universe sees <laughs> Vulcan be destroyed. And you know, if you have a if you're if you have a sister planet, it would obviously destroy your planet too because you're relying yeah, on it sure. be cataclysmic. Sure. But um I just like to say don't freak out. That was probably just the sister planet. It's going to be okay. Um, did did either of you get freaked out in that moment where you're like, that shouldn't be there? No. No? Because I had a brief moment where I was like, no, like, oh, no. No. It's a little close for a sister planet. <laughs> right? Yeah. You just, oh, keep me. Like, maybe, maybe they're friends. It, it was extraordinary. I'm proud I, of you. I, I, well, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Maybe it's like Tukut or something like that. It's got a weird like apostrophe name. It's a fun little Vulcan name. <laughs> but let's talk about another arguably inconsistent thing that happened in this episode because um, Federation starships don't have holodecks. No. no. Not before the late 23rd century according to, and we looked it up today to be sure, Voyager Flashback Season 3 Episode 2 where it's very clearly stated. Those don't exist before then. However, I saw today somebody involved in the production was tweeting specifically about this scene that they were holographic Klingons, not holodeck Klingons. Right. Like a like a like a simulation, like a like a training simulation with holographic. Like a holodeck. (laughs) Sort of like like a holodeck. You know, like a holodeck. Yeah. 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 In that context, yes. Because if you remember in Enterprise. Lieutenant Reed does set up holographic projectors for phaser practice. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they can just project a Klingon in the the hallway. And right. Such. Yeah. But you need that amount of, amount of space, and it can't. It can't. It doesn't work like a holodeck where it yeah. seems like she can't endless space. Yeah, because that was a Klingon hallway. Yeah. That was a Klingon hallway too. Straight up Klingon hallway. So they're really. I think the fact that they're on this experimental ship that's running three hundred experiments at a time, and like they are really. They're they're really living on the edge as writers when it comes to mm-hmm. um, what is they and is not allowed on the technology. Mm-hmm. Now, on the one hand, they completely throw it out the window when they do like a hologram phone call uh, <laughs> instead of doing it on your little viewing pad. But then this one, they're like edging in carefully saying it's not a holodeck, it's just a hologram. Um, what do you guys think about this whole visual redesign and then the fact that they're like trying to walk back parts of it now, because they did say it'll all line up with canon mm-hmm. eventually. What do you think? I mean, I'm pretty, I'm okay with it because I feel like sometimes you have to 
break the rules once you get to a certain point where we have some of the technology like we've surpassed like we have some of the technology like we've surpassed like next gen in some ways with our personal technology so I feel like I'm okay with it to that extent. You know what I mean? I could kind of wrap my head around me like, oh, okay, they're just trying to be like, well, they would have this by now. And yeah. we didn't have it then to work with it then. We hadn't thought about it. But now we, and I, I feel like that's okay. Like I'm not like hard, hard continuity, like geek on that and on that level. Yeah. Like we all have better iPads than Jake Sisko. Right. Yeah. That's a Yeah. So shame. that's <laughs> kind of, you know, I'm okay when they bend the rules in that, okay. in that regard. Okay. What do you think, Heath? There's like visual redesign, but it's still canon. They kind of have to a little bit. It was it was the same thing like when Enterprise came. A lot of people yeah. were complaining about how oh it's it's different, but you, you kind of have to because technology has progressed so much. In terms of like that whole holographic thing, I looked at it even afterwards, thinking that it was a little bit of a missed opportunity mm. for adding a little bit of charm to the show mm -hmm. because I just seen the Orville with the holographic projectors. Yeah, so just imagine mm. a bunch of red shirts. <laughs> That have holographic projectors and are being shot as Klingon Whoa. by the captain and Ash, yeah, yeah. and he's like, "Thanks, boys." That and they're walking off like, fun. like yeah. they're all like they're being affected, but it's yeah. Not, so yeah, and, so and then it's an yeah. inside Star Trek joke with a bunch of red shirts that were just shot sure. by the captain and yeah. his first officer. That's a fun idea. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like and that. it's charming. People can laugh to get a giggle out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That is very fun, man. Why didn't that happen? Oh, yeah, there was a laugh in this episode. <laughs> This did have a couple of moments where <laughs> there, it was actually worth there's more than one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a computer. Uh, yes, Jeff is telling us that Kirk Enterprise had a kind of holodeck in the animated series. Well, it's amazing what you can get away with in the anime series. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it costs about as much to have a 19-foot-tall dragon as it does a, uh, like, six-foot human. So you can do all <laughs> kinds of interesting stuff. I love the different kinds of humanoids that the animated series could get away with. But that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And and the Constitution-class ship is older mm -hmm. than Discovery right. by a ways. Like, Discovery is a brand-new ship, and the Constitution-class had been around for, like, 20 years mm -hmm. by the time Kirk got a hold of it. So, arguably, this is a newer ship than the Enterprise. It could use some, you know, red handlebars here and there, but, you know, <laughs> I guess some, sometimes you hire a different designer. Big square walls. Right? Big square walls. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting about Enterprise was that they had that mirror episode where they managed to get onto a Constitution class ship and do a redesign to a Constitution with like modern ish, I mean, t 2003 mm -hmm. design um, quality that looked a lot better mm -hmm. than the original series, but still looked like they were trying to work off that blueprint. Sure. Yeah. And the fact that there are elements of discovery, like the wooden panels here and there, mm -hmm. and the the sort of trapezoid designs of some of the hallways that look a little bit like what you might have mm -hmm. seen on Constitution ships. Like, there are little hat tips here and there. Um, but yeah, I'm still having a hard time looking at these people in these sleek blue uniforms, whether they say disco or not, mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time with those uniforms more than just about anything else. Really? Yeah. The uniforms have grown on me. Oh, I think they're cool. Like, yeah. I, just... I have a jacket like the <laughs> uniform, and I'm kind of wearing it, so if I get an audition for this, I'm going to show up in my jacket. Yes. This is long before. Yeah. I, I That's hilarious. From like your marching band days? No, it's, it's a Lululemon coat that Dead Cat got me a long time ago. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. Really oh man! So we we've talked a little bit about some false stakes that happened with Sarek being the oh no is he gonna make it mm -hmm. and then the false stakes of oh let's have a fight against these Klingons you and me again and then they're hologram Klingons. Mm -hmm. um, but the the real stakes of this episode I think happened with our admiral mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Lorca. Mm -hmm. I I really for the first time in. Six hours, not really fair, he wasn't in the first two, but in sure. six hours of this show, the captain of the Discovery, I liked him. I it thought he was really interesting in this episode. What did you think? He really clicked. Right? You know, it's like a, what I've been waiting for, like, with a lot of the elements of, like, how the crew interact. I'm like, oh, this kind of feels, you know, it's feeling Star Trek. Like, yeah. people are relating to each other. They're working as a team. They seem to like each other. Yeah. You know, and Star I was really looking things. forward to, yeah, I was looking forward to this episode, and now I feel like 
vindicated, you know, because I was like, it's gonna turn the tide. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought he was so compassionate. Yeah. And it, you know, it's interesting because he actually the from the previous episode when Sarah was looking at that list of things that captains that are mm -hmm. like, and he was checking off those. Some of those things yep. this week, Absolutely. you know, especially on the compassion part and like caring about his crew, yeah. you know, and giving people second chances, you know, and being vulnerable. Which well, is I, I don't want to spoil it, but do you think he sent the Admiral to that meeting knowing it was a trap? I think he sent her to that meeting hoping it was. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Because he's going to lose the ship. Mm -hmm. And he has that great moment of like, it's my life. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know. I never, I didn't think about it like that, but now when I re recall, I watched the episode, now when I recall when he says bye to her, uh, when she's getting on the shuttle, uh, yeah. <laughs> because right? he's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> See you around. Yeah. And yeah. I was surprised she survived. Uh, and when, I, when her two, um, well, big time spoiler alert, when her, <laughs> if Red you're watching this without watching this show, why? I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> when, when the like blue shirts with, Bronze, it's bronze. On them? Yeah. Get their throats cut, and then the aliens who were just lurking in the background yeah. that I kind of thought were set dressing just <laughs> like fell down dead. It was like they oh. were. It's like, oh, we knocked those over. Make up a line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, now they're bleeding. Um, <laughs> a computer. We have two uh, questions for clarification. Cat mm -hmm. wants to know what was up with Stamets and his sudden switch to speed loving surfer guy. Mm -hmm. Wondering if anyone has any insight on that. Mm -hmm. And Derek thought Lorca would somehow eliminate the Admiral, but the Klingons helped him out, which was a surprise. Ooh, yeah. man, that would have been cold. Yeah. And I gotta say, on a show where we're getting F-bombs and crazy amounts of, of um, body horror gore, yeah. I'm surprised we didn't get a sex scene. R oh, how, right. How, how did... Well, because we have our first, like, sex scene in the show, really, mm -hmm. and we just get to wake up afterwards like we're watching our parents' Star Trek. It's they're not talking like it's our parents' Star Trek, they're not goring like it's our parents' Star Trek, but they're still afraid of a sex scene. I find that interesting. That's just common with television, in my opinion, because especially in the United States, it's like, yeah, violence, okay. You know, sex, bad. Oddly right? enough... The, I, I've heard a lot of people call this, people who don't like Star Trek Discovery, I've heard them call it bad Game of Thrones in space. Hmm. And it's like, all oh, the characters are out for each other. People die in two episodes. And it's just like, you, nobody's safe. But then you don't get a sex scene. And um, Sonya and I were talking about how cool it was that Lorca was being romantic with a woman his age, mm -hmm. and it just looked great. Yeah. And then we didn't get to actually see a love scene of any mm -hmm. kind. Whether it had, like, nibbly bits or not mm -hmm. is sort of beside the point. But there's never really been, like, a, like a full-on sex scene in Star Trek mm -hmm. in the way that we've never had F-bombs before this. And we've right. never had um, just gore. sweet, ridiculous gore. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it was interesting that we didn't get that. They shied, they've shied away from that, too, mm -hmm. in the last episode because... You know, I think rap like Stamets and the Doctor. They didn't. They were sensitive towards each other, yeah. but they didn't kiss or anything like that. So they're kind of pulling away from that. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's going to change, but yeah, it feels like Discovery's afraid of sex. Yeah, yeah, I find that interesting. Um, but but the question. Th yeah, the the question. I I, I would say, it kind of comes down to. It kind of comes down for me to the fact that this show is um, still trying to find its feet. What is it doing with Stamets? What, what, if you get, like, stabbed in the nipples a lot, you get really groovy? <laughs> I don't really know. Yeah, you use the word he used. You know, they didn't, they didn't really show how that jump they did happened, but I assume Stamets is just, like, sitting in there getting eugenics and then <laughs> nipple shots. And I feel like um, some really interesting things are happening with Stamets. Uh, I'm, I'm sad that they didn't pick up that spooky mirror thing from the previous right. episode with Stamets in this one. He just had one groovy scene, maybe and that was it. Maybe they pick it up later, you know? I don't They're going to have to. And um, he did show a glimmer of that when he, he swore, like, in the previous mm -hmm. episode. So it, I connected his grooviness to to that Stamets. You know oh. what I mean? The, those two mm -hmm. Stamets go together. Interesting. And I've also been thinking about Anthony Rapp in general because I've been thinking, whoa, he's just so you know, big, and everybody else isn't. And then I, I kind of rethought it and thought, maybe he's in a, 
he's in like actual Star Trek where he's doing like the melodrama Star Trek Maybe. and everybody else is in the new Star Trek and he's like no I'm gonna be like uh, you classic know, Star Trek over here yeah and he's like a, like a real fan of Star Trek he's like whoa I'm gonna be gigantic and then everybody <laughs> else is like no we're doing a new show Anthony yeah, we're doing you know? <laughs> we're, we're, we're throwing the line away Anthony yeah. you, gotta, you, know I mean? you gotta throw the line so away so I kind of forgive that I'm like yeah I'm like yeah I'm, get, I'm getting you now like I, I'm gelling with him a bit more. okay what did, what did you think of Stamets and his like move to the groovy side in this episode it, it was cool and I can't help but think because they show you on next week's Discovery and it seems mm. like that's a very heavy episode for him and it yep. seems like he's gonna that his new groovy character is going to be coming out a lot more. Yeah, nothing like a like a time loop episode to remind <laughs> you that you're watching Star Trek, oh, yeah. but also to make you feel like you just wasted an hour of your life because it only is like eight minutes worth of story, right? Because it's <laughs> like the four that. minutes at the beginning and the four minutes at the end and the rest of it's just loops. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that episode goes next week, especially because next week there will be an Orville episode for it to go up against, and next week's Orville looks pretty heavy. So it will be a very interesting conversation next week, I think. Mm. Um, should we uh, swing over to Red Alert and should talk about whether Discovery <laughs> this week, back. right? <laughs> Tactical How Alert. How did that happen? Let's oh. talk about uh, whether these elements of Discovery that this week kind of clicked in a way I haven't felt before. It felt like Star Trek. It felt... Like so Star Trek, like right? Star Trek. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it. Did okay. Discovery trek it or wreck it for you this week? It trekked it, trekked it. Yeah, it was. You know, it's funny. We've been talking about the Orville and like maybe Orville's carrying a little bit more of the Star Trek weight every week. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think Discovery made up for the weight in this episode. They were like they did their own job and they. It was okay that Orville wasn't. Around around this week. You know I gotta what I mean? say, it was Track kind it. of okay, because yeah. I was planning on just re-watching the pilot of Orville, so that I'd be able to, you know, get my Orville fix. But then I watched this episode of Discovery, and I didn't feel like I needed it. Mm -hmm. what, what, what did you think? Did, did it Trek it or wreck it this week? I think, I think this is the first one I can say that I actually Trekked it, but I find there was a lot more compassion in this show, some humor. Um, I think the Klingon thing was just thrown in for some action because they realized, oh, this is like a, an emotionally heavy episode, so we need to have some action in there. So mm -hmm. we'll throw that, that Klingon stuff in there. Which, to me, like that's the great thing about Star Trek is it's the morality plays mm -hmm. that they, they, they bring in and they, they, you get emotionally invested in the characters. And it seemed like that's what they were doing this week. It's like, okay, let's get you invested in these characters so that when yeah. we throw them into hell two weeks from now, you actually care about them yeah. as opposed to, it's like, eh, I never really liked that guy. Right? Yeah, and I've, I've got to say, for the first time uh, on this show, Discovery tracked it for me. Yes! <laughs> Aww, right? I have a soft spot for Discovery, right? so I'm so happy. I feel, I feel like we, we got some trek out of Discovery this week. And, and I, I don't want to sound so surprised, but I'm surprised. <laughs> um, it, it's disappointed me so consistently. And th that's not to say this episode didn't disappoint me because there were disappointing moments in it. Um, and the fact that it was hung on the life or death situation of a character that we knew was going to survive. It's like, that never worked in the prequels of Star Wars because guess what? I think Obi-Wan's going to make it. Um, if he lost a nut, though. <laughs> you would have been really Obi Wan has one nut. Oh man, he's only had one nut the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean that that element for Sarek, I was wondering if they were going to like connect it to the like heart issues he has later Yay. when we first mm -hmm. when we first meet him in the original series. But it, I didn't care that it didn't work. Point there though, maybe that had like it's it's actually worn his connections with her and that those stretches that he's taking. It has worn him down for the future when we're seeing him in TNG and he's like, you know, it has losing his, I never he's had losing that connection his, with yeah. Spock and yeah. yeah. The, so maybe this is there. part of yeah. that. Yeah, I think the, you know? the, there is a certain amount of connective tissue happening here when you see the other Vulcans interact with Sarek mm -hmm. and consider him like a bit of a weak logician or, right, from a renegade, Vulcan standpoint. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, he's got this wife that they kind of frown upon. He's got this half, this, this half Vulcan, half mm -hmm. human kid. He's got this other human kid. Like, he's the only Vulcan in his house. And, and <laughs> you know, like, there's going to be people, there's going to be people who are looking at him like, dude, what's wrong with you? But I like the fact that, you know, we got a bit of the, the evil villain racial purity 
on the Vulcans this right. time around, and to find out that it was evil Vulcan racial purity that, you know, as much as I think, um, the, what, what, did, what were they called? Logic extremists? Yeah. yeah. I don't know about that name. You could have come up with something <laughs> more creative. But uh, it was one of those things where it's nice to see that it's not just the evil Klingons. That shades sure. of gray, the, 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 there's, there's some pushback, even from the Klingons now. And like from the Vulcans now. It's I, good to see. I feel like that kind of extremism within the is good to show within the Vulcans because it's opening the doorway for humans to be the ones that do the job to make that connection with Klingons. You know what I mean? Yeah. For it to be humans that are the ambassadors with the Klingons. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Curzon's a- Dax eventually and stuff like yeah. that. You know what I mean? It's opening the door for us, right? I'm, I'm hoping Curzon Dax shows up at some point. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> uh, computer? Uh, Kat and Derek agree that uh, that it trekked it. Wow. Uh, Sonya has a lot of surprise that Matt thinks that it trekked it. <laughs> maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome. Maybe maybe I've just been worn down. I don't know. And Derek says you forgot about Cybok. You forgot Cybok. That's in true. Your yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't mention no. Cybok. Uh, maybe we'll get to him in the next episode. Yeah. Who knows? We may get we may get some more um, we may get some more Sarek because he's on he's in sickbay mm-hmm. yeah and he was in no condition to go anywhere right. <laughs> so i don't know if if he'll be on the ship for next week's time mm-hmm. loop episode but mud is on the ship in next week's yeah. time loop episode yeah. which will be interesting because mud in the original series mud interacts with kirk by sheer chance he's not he doesn't hold a grudge right. by it's a complete fluke that he pulls in uh in i mud that he pulls in kirk right. so if he goes after Lorca specifically it will be so out of character i'm looking forward to seeing whether i need to give discovery shit for that next week <laughs> if you want to get mad and rage just bring the klingons and their luck <laughs> especially if it's just to hide this Vok nash thing if that's all it is oh my god it had better not be if that is a weak weak move if that's the case anyway um this is interesting this is our first like unanimous Discovery trekked it week. So, um, Discovery, don't fuck it up. <laughs> Give us another keep good it going. one. Yeah. yeah. Give us another good one next week. <laughs> Let's keep this going. And with any luck, uh, Jonathan Frakes will show up and direct one of these yeah. sooner than later. Because, be again, so they, they seem to be hiding that information. So, th- with all the allusions to mirrors and reflections, we got another one in this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be really interesting to see um, where they can take it from here. There is a plot happening now I'm excited about. Yeah. And I'm excited to see what uh, what the Orville brings us next week because uh, reruns just didn't quite cut it. <laughs> we'll see you next week.